Hello there, it's Jermaine from LiveWellZone.com and in today's video I'm going to be talking about the use of vitamin K for heavy menstrual cycles. Now in general there are three things that could contribute to heavy flow. So it could be due to hormonal imbalances, it could also be due to what is known as mechanical issues, so things like fibroids and endometriosis, or it could also be due to abnormalities in the process of blood clotting. And this is where vitamin K comes into play. So one of the main roles or main benefits of vitamin K is that it is essential for the production of proteins that regulate uh, blood clotting as well as anticoagulation. So blood clotting is the process of thickening the blood and getting it almost to like a gel-like consistency. And you can basically think of anticoagulation as the opposite. So this is preventing the blood's ability to clot. Okay, so vitamin K is necessary for both of those processes and we need both of those processes functioning properly depending on the situation. So if, for example, you have a deficiency in vitamin K, then you could potentially find yourself at risk for having a heavy flow. Now, another potential benefit of using this vitamin for your cycle is that it seems to regulate estrogen metabolism. When it comes to the endometrial lining, estrogen is responsible for thickening that lining. And the more estrogen you have, then the more that lining is going to be thicker and which means you're going to bleed more during menstruation. So something like vitamin K that seems to regulate the estrogen metabolism could potentially help again to alleviate the intensity of blood loss during menstruation. Okay, so those are really the two main benefits of vitamin K is the fact that we need it for blood clotting and also the fact that it does seem to play a role in balancing out um, estrogen. So now let's talk about the two types of vitamin K. So we have K1 and K2. K1 is found mainly in plant foods, especially things like leafy greens, while K2 is going to be found more in fermented foods as well as in animal foods. And in addition to that, your gut bacteria will also make K2. Now, when we're talking specifically about blood clotting, it's usually been thought that K1 was the most important, but there's also research now showing that K2 seems to play an important role. So I came across one study where the participants ate natto. So natto is a fermented soy food. They ate natto and it had a positive effect on blood clotting for several days. And they also noticed that the effect was actually or the impact was actually stronger than the impact from eating K1 rich food. So basically here, the point is that you should just make sure that you're eating enough healthy foods so that you get both of those vitamins into your diet. Now to give you an idea of some good food sources for these vitamins, when it comes to K1, some good food sources would be spinach, beet greens, broccoli, kale, cabbage, collard greens, parsley, turnip greens, Brussels sprouts, and scallions. As for K2, some food sources are things like raw cheese, uh, raw yogurt, natto, which I talked about before, and all other fermented foods, beef liver, eggs, chicken, goose liver paste. So those are a few different food sources for both of these forms of vitamin K. Now, in addition, you could also get vitamin K into your routine by taking it as a supplement. Now, the one caveat here is that I did not find any dosage information when it comes to uh, a dosage that is specific for heavy menstrual cycles. So the main thing to be aware of here is that uh, the RDA varies de depending on the age. So if you are a girl 14 to 18 years of age, then you need 75 micrograms of vitamin K per day. If you're a woman 19 and above, then you would need 90, 90 micrograms. Now, if you are taking a daily multivitamin, then you're probably getting some vitamin K because most brands tend to include vitamin K in the multivitamin uh, formulation, okay? But you can also find standalone vitamin K supplement. But in this case though, the dosages vary a lot. So some will give you smaller dosages that are closer to the RDA and some will give you significantly more. 
and you always want to be mindful of how much you are taking when it comes to these supplements because you could create more problems by taking too much so it's a good idea to check in with your doctor first and then you can get a dosage that is customized for your body specifically okay and also keep in mind that there are certain nutrients that will help you absorb vitamin k better so one of those is vitamin d so when buying a supplement look out for one that includes vitamin d3 in the formulation because that is going to help you to absorb more of that vitamin k so that's it for this video. I hope you found this information helpful. And if you want to learn more about vitamin K, there's an article on my website that goes along with this video. So I will make sure to link to that in the description section below. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, do not hesitate to share this with anybody else that would benefit from this information. If you have any questions or comments, or if you yourself have actually tried vitamin K supplements, please share your experience in the comments section because that will help other people reading through uh, the comments. All right. So thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.